He got it, though. He got through it. And looks like Dom is doing the final spin, and we might actually end up seeing an answer coming in here in the chat. Let's watch the chat and see if Dom comes through with an answer here. And Dom has come in with an answer. 85.58, or we'll call that 85.6 pounds. That is not correct. That is not within tolerance. And we see him zooming in rapidly and finding uh, finding maybe what the issue was. So he, he, he located that pretty darn quick. Yeah. And so let's, in contours. let's see. Now remember, Dom can answer incorrectly one time. If he answers incorrectly again, he will open the door. And enjoys fishing, hunting, and camping. Man, I, I think me and Dom could hang out here um, really well. I do equipment manufacturing. is I, I work on a lot of that. Uh, it's a big variety, but that's one of those things. And I love fishing and camping as well. So, uh, yeah, we'd, we'd get along really good. Nice. Yeah. He's also, he's also CSWE, and I myself as well. So that's that's a cool little, little badge to have. Um, yeah. He knows a few things in SolidWorks. I think. Yeah, for sure. CSWE certified SolidWorks expert. Uh, not yeah. an easy thing to uh, to accomplish at all. All right, guys. Well, let's get into it here. Now that we've learned a little bit about these competitors, we got our number seven seed versus our number ten seed. I think we're going to see a really, really close matchup here, and I'm very excited to see the different workflows in Inventor versus SolidWorks. TJ Prokes in the chat says, "Let's get it, Dom. Let's go." All right, guys, good luck to both of our runners. Good luck to Pedro. This CAD battle between Brazil and the United States, between Inventor and SolidWorks, begins in three, two, one, go. What is the mass of this part in XX.X pounds? So we're doing a pounds model here. Our runners are grabbing a screen capture. This model is called slotted frame. It's in inches, inches, and this is using plain carbon steel. One material for the entire model, plain carbon steel. So good luck to our runners. The wheel of fate can be cruel sometimes. Pretty cool model though, huh, Ivan? Yes, it is. I like it. I'm looking at it. I'm like, very nice, very interesting. A little different than uh, some of your parts, I think. Yes. So we, um, looking at the purple notes, and there's you know there's some hollow tubes, mm -hmm. and there's some that are not so hollow. Yep, I like it. So I we like it. I flipped over to our CAD versus CAD screen here. We can see that what Ivan was referring to there was those green tubes are hollow. Uh, those are hollow tubes, and then the yellow tubes are solid. Um, this isn't necessarily multi-body. You could do it multi-body. You could do it regular. Um, either way, it certainly will work. Uh, no need to do it one way or the other. Uh, they will both work. It's all one material, and uh, but the geometry of those green tubes is more of a hollow, you know, traditional tube geometry. The geometry of those yellow tubes is more of a solid bar stock. But I think what's going to be interesting here is kind of the layout of those dimensions. We see Dom on the right going through and trying to lay that out because we've got our, you know, it's almost like you're looking down from the top, like this frame has to fit into something else. So it's looking down from the top with more of like hole pattern type dimensions. But then you have to create that bent tube going up and over. And this is this is where we're going to see some interesting results. So we see that Dom decided to lay that out with some circles from the top looking down. And uh, now he's going to be going through and trying to figure out how to create what will almost certainly be a path. And that's certainly one way to model this. There's a uh, there's I tested this using quite a few different techniques, though. So. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a few different ways that you could do this. Absolutely. Yeah, I like it. And you know, there's, there's, I mean, I'm not going to say too much. These guys are in it, wow. but, uh, yeah. you know, there's, there's tools that are kind of, I mean, this has got weldman parts in it. Could be weldman so too. Yeah. You could do it like that. Um, but then sometimes it's a little quicker. You just do some basic features and a few shortcuts. And I gotta say, you ah. know, speaking of shortcuts, Dom got that sweep in place. Like oh, yeah. really, really fast, really smooth for that sweep. Uh, that was that was incredible. Yep. And then he you saw he tried to do a mirror. He did a mirror body, but merge bodies was checked on, so it failed. And Dom yeah. Dom was able to get in there and analyze that pretty quickly. Very impressive. And we see uh, we see Pedro over on the left going through. Got that same sweep in place. So he's got that same geology. Let's see how he approaches creating the duplicate. We'll, we'll assume he's gonna do some kind of mirror to get that thing mirrored across. 
Uh, pretty interesting to see the Autodesk Inventor interface compared to the SOLIDWORKS interface. Let me see if I can just get a little bit more of that on screen for our audience. There we go. Really, really interesting to see these two, two CAD experts using two different CAD systems trying to model this up at the same time. Yeah, it is. It is cool. And you see a feature manager tree there in Inventor 2, but it just looks a little different. And yeah, I imagine it, it's similar to in SOLIDWORKS, but yeah. I, I don't think I've used Inventor before. Wow, wow, wow. Dom coming through with those solid bar stocks. Look at that section view in Inventor, though, over on the left from Pedro Tavares. That's pretty cool to see that section view, to see those hollowed tubes there mm -hmm. like that. And now Dom getting in here, trying to create these final few features, some kind of a slotted cut there on those solid bars, going through those yellow bars. See if I can move that part out of the way so we can see a little bit more of the action. Yeah, I feel like the the slot feature, uh, sketching a slot, is, is a pretty handy one. And one that probably a number of years ago, I didn't use a whole lot. Um, you can actually, you can actually, it's, it's, it's useful for a lot of things. I mean, it's a quick way to do a slot, but you can, you can do a little more with it as well. Yeah. One thing that Victor K brought up in the tournament was using the slot command in lieu of creating like a tombstone shape. You could just do it as a slot and have that extra for like a lug. If there's a lug on some type of a, you know, a cast part, uh, that could That's be right. another great time saver. Yeah. Shout out to Victor K, my co-commentator last week. Oh yeah. Great guy. And look at this mirroring from Dom. A little bit of an Ivan exploit here, too, it looks like. <laughs> okay, we see what we call SolidWorks being SolidWorks. Very common saying amongst the uh, forum users. Just SolidWorks, yeah. just SolidWorks being SolidWorks. You got four closed contours, but nope, you can't cut extrude. Okay, <laughs> he got it, though. He got through it. And looks like Dom is doing the final spin, and we might actually end up seeing an answer coming in here in the chat. Let's watch the chat and see if Dom comes through with an answer here. And Dom has come in with an answer, 85.58, or we'll call that 85.6 pounds. That is not correct. That is not within tolerance. And we see him zooming in rapidly and finding uh, finding maybe what the issue was. So he, he, he located that pretty darn quick. Yeah. And so let's, in contours. let's see. Now, remember, Dom can answer incorrectly one time. If he answers incorrectly again, he will open the door for Pedro Tavares. So we're gonna we're gonna see what happens here. Okay, and Dom has come in with a second answer, and his second answer is 84.98 pounds, and that is not correct. That is not correct. So Dom unfortunately cannot answer again. He's gonna have to figure out what's going on with his model, but he cannot answer it. See, it looks like he just figured out what was going on with this model. <laughs> Frustrating, uh, frust I see it. frustratingly shaking there. Victor K in the chat, noticing that we're going to now bring up what's called the timer of doom. So Dom has potentially opened the door for Pedro. So the way this is going to work now is Pedro is going to have five minutes to come up with the answer. He has not answered incorrectly yet. So he can answer once incorrectly and then answer correctly. But he's got five minutes now to answer this model, to come up with the correct mass of this model. Dom answered 85.58 or 85.6. That was not correct. Dom answered 85. Uh, that was also not correct. And so now it's up to Pedro. Um, he's got the opportunity here to come up with the correct answer. He's got four minutes and 20 seconds. Four minutes and 20 seconds. And uh, he's going to try to come up with the answer for this challenge. This is going to be interesting. So we really get to kind of watch uh, Inventor here. Looks like he he's going through. Looks like we might actually be seeing an answer coming in here from Pedro. So looks like Pedro is coming in with an answer here. 104.187. That is not correct. That is not correct. So we're going to give Pedro a chance here to look at the model, to look at his, his model on screen, to look at the print and to see if he's got everything. Yep. Yeah, the timer, the timer gives us uh, some interesting scenarios, right? I've seen it. Yeah. I've seen it work out good and bad. Yep, yep. 
And we've experienced both. <laughs> yeah, and it's a really interesting display here we're seeing. It's almost like it looks like those slots are there on the left side of mm -hmm. Pedro's model, but they're not there. Um, and certainly, yeah. you know, that, that, could be, uh, that could be a problem. It certainly looks like yeah. interesting inventor interface here. You can mirror it to one side or to the other, but not both. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Choose your side. Choose your side. Yeah. And that clock of doom just keeps on running. Well, wow. I've got a second here. I just got to shout out your um, your uh, tournament trophy. The image. I don't know if you've had it before or not, but the, the tessellated cup. Thank you. Yeah, no. I, I like it. It's it's that's a nice touch. Thank you. That's a that's a new cup for this world championship. And uh, we're definitely proud of how that one came out. And uh, who knows, maybe we'll, maybe we'll, if we keep getting this super chat coming in, maybe eventually we'll have a, a budget for some physical trophies. And that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, that'd be sweet. All right. So we see uh, K Customs in the chat says, I think I got it. And Pedro coming in with a, his second answer, 39.003. That is not correct. Not correct. So what we've got is what's known as a push. And if anybody out there in the chat wants to answer, this is your chance to flex. This is your chance to shine. But unfortunately, that is not correct. And uh, if anybody wants to answer in the chat, feel free to do so. This is your chance. We see Mr. Alex coming in in the chat, 84.34. And that is correct within tolerance. Uh, Rambo Bros, 60.96, not correct. Ricardo Jean, 84.384. Yep, that is correct within tolerance, 84.4. That's the number that I got. I'd say in the chat, 84.4, that's what I got. Although it does matter if you choose to uh, merge the tangent faces in the sweep or not. And that's why that model had such a big tolerance on it. But uh, not big enough to overcome missing that half of the slot. SolidWorks being SolidWorks, Dom. Dom in the chat says, whoo. Got away from that one, yes. GG, GG to both of our runners. Well done to both of our runners. And uh, we're gonna go on now. That's a push, so nobody gets a point for that one. That's our first push. If we have two pushes in the same match, then we will go to the sudden death rule. 